Okay, just uh, went over the drawing. It looks pretty good. Um, just have a couple of issues I want to just go over with you quickly, and that would be firstly the um, stage area. Um, looks really good. You've got the angles right. Um, my only concern was when when we have a large opening like this, most of the times there will be a soffit over the um, opening, and I just want to make sure that when you draw the walls on either side that they are in alignment. Now, of course, you've got the um, PDF loaded. You can't see it, but uh, when I unload it for a second, you can see that the walls aren't exactly lined up. That one, I tagged that end. Um, so we want to make sure they're in alignment. That way, when we do a soffit, um, the lines will be continuous across. Um, that will help a lot. will also help when uh, let me just load in the PDF again. When we go to uh, add the stage, obviously the, it should be symmetrical around either end, and it really won't be if one wall is set forward or back. Um, the other thing was you said you had a question about the stage, or really any curved wall. In this particular instance, it's not really a wall. It's a stage. It's more like floors. So we can just draw an arc. And unfortunately, they don't give us too many dimensions, so we're just going to have to draw it, um, sort of freehand it, you know, pick the two points, and then we can sort of um, manipulate the center grip to where you want to put it. And then you can just offset lines. Now, I can show you um, what would happen if we did it with a wall. And so I'm going to grab a wall style here. Any wall style would work. Um, I'm just going to use this thick 8-inch wall just so we can see it. And again, we'll just pick a point. And before we go any further, I'll just turn my ortho off, um, which was F8. Um, so we've got what would be a straight line, but if you type in A for arc and enter, and just pick the midpoint, it's going to start to create and bend around that midpoint. It's pretty cool. So if you wanted to do it with a wall style, but... Um, and then again, grip it and move it. So it isn't a wall style in this particular case, but if you had to <clears throat> make a wall style, that's how you would do it. You just make it an arc when you're when you're in the process. Okay. Otherwise, that looks really good. Um, the other thing was, let's go to a door. And again, I'm just going to unload the reference just because it is um, easier to see. So. I'm also going to bring in my properties box to help um, illustrate what I'm trying to do here. So if we click on this door, we see that it is now measuring to the outside, measure two, and it says outside of frame. Um, that works for windows. It doesn't really work for doors. Um, and that's because I'll show you why. So if we go to the dimension, and I want to dimension the actual door slab itself, 210. That's not really a, an actual door size. And if I click on it, it's saying it's three feet. Hmm. Well, it's measuring to the outside of the frame, which is three feet. Now, that's incorrect. We know a three-foot door is actually a three-foot wide slab. And then outside of that would be the buck and the jam. So if I go um, quickly just to show you inside a frame, Boom, it changes this, the thickness to, or the width to a three foot slab. Now, this is nothing you're doing on purpose or even probably knew about. It's um, in the settings, and I'm going to show you how to change that. Now you can see that's the proper width of an interior door. Uh, let's go to the exterior, and you'll see. Um, first, I'll dimension it for you. Six foot one. That's a pretty odd size. What what are we doing here? Okay, exterior. So it should be three foot panels, and they're coming in at two ten and a half. Really strange. So again, we'll go back to this and we'll switch it to inside the frame. And there you go. Now really, this should be more like six four. Um, this one's saying 6.5. I, I think that these J 
gems are bigger than they should be, but that's regardless. At this point, it doesn't really affect us because we're not doing construction drawings, but we do want it to look um, accurate. And so, how to change that? We go to our, our um, tool palettes and we'll click on doors. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Any door you choose, really. Uh, ones that you're going to be using a lot, I'll say let's start there. So let's just pick an interior hinge, hinged single. I'll highlight it and then right click on it. And it brings up a little menu and you want to click on properties. And that's going to bring up another dialog box. Um, this AutoCAD has infinite control over things, so don't let it um, drive you crazy. So anyway. Tool properties for that particular hinged single door. And you'll see mine is set to measure to inside a frame. If you click on it, you can go outside a frame or inside. Of course, mine is set already to the proper um, switch to inside a frame, but if yours will probably say outside and you want to switch that to inside. Let's go back to one that you had here. Let's see. And that is coming in as a hinged single. Okay, so. It's just, it's not going to um, show right on mine because it's already there, but I have switched them probably previously a long time ago. Uh, let's go to properties on my hinge single full light. Yeah, everything's coming in as it should because I've set it that way. So if you just take a minute and set it that way, it really help um, when we're drawing this stuff. And you might have to just go back and click on these ones that you've already drawn and change them to inside the frame. And you can see that they'll change. The last thing I think I wanted to just go over, maybe load the PDF back in, um, was the ramp here. When I you just erase your walls for a second that you've drawn, it look, it's really supposed to be a railing. Um, yeah, that's a railing. So there is a railing uh, tool. And if we go to your tool palettes and just go to design tab, and that has a bunch of generic everything's on it. So there is railing. Um, and if we could click on railing, it'll allow us to, I'm just gonna draw it off to the side a little bit. Draw a rail. And you can just pick a point, swing it around. I'm drawing it extra large so you can illustrate it. And then hit return or enter. And I'm going to just pick it up so you can see, object viewer, um, that it is a railing. It's pretty cool. And of course, it, it works like everything else. You can manipulate it, bring it closer, uh, stretch it, whatever you need to do. So um, that way it doesn't show up as a wall, thick, heavy line. It will give you a, a lighter, non-filled line. Um, I know you're in the process of working on all of this stuff, so no worries. We'll get there. Um, and of course, wall thicknesses. Here's one. It looks like it's supposed to be an eight-inch wall. Um, so easily changed. You can just go to your properties and find a wall that you have in there that hopefully I gave you. It could be a stud wall. At this point, like I said, as long as it's coming in thick and dark, um, it's going to represent the way we want it to. So uh, here we go. I have some stud eights, and it's just going to make that thicker. Put it in the right spot. Cool. I think that's it for this drawing. Keep going. It looks great. And um, we'll see what happens soon. Thank you.